Have you ever headed over to another player's shop and felt like you were being ripped off? Like maybe that person's piece of perfectly preserved pie is a bit overpriced? Well, because the prices at these newly added camp vendors are set by other players in an open economy, the price of any particular item is how much you're willing to pay for it. In this video, we're going to go over what I believe to be good prices on everything from stem packs to that overpowered 3-star legendary rifle. Because as a buyer, there is no real way to know whether you're getting a good deal or being ripped off. Also, this video should help Fallout's entrepreneurs by making sure their prices stay competitive. I know there's a huge subculture in Fallout 76 of legendary farmers and PvP players where huge stockpiles of supplies and legendary weapons are regularly traded for big profits. This video is an outside perspective of those meta players and shops. But if this video takes off, I figure I could put together some spreadsheets and make a more accurate look at the exact values of certain items and legendary effects on weapons and armor. Let me know if that video sounds interesting and possibly if you'd be willing to help because I'd probably try to crowdsource it. So let's start with the category I found most surprising, ammo. Most player shops will hold some amount of ammo, some with only a few hundred rounds, and some with their entire stockpile ready to be sold. With ammo especially, it's important not to overpay. In my findings, most players set the price of ballistic ammo, like 10mm, 308, 38, 45, 44, and so on, at the lowest price available, one cap. But I have some advice for you. You shouldn't be paying this price for normal ballistic ammo. In my price search, I found several player vendors selling ammo of all types for zero caps, and sometimes a pretty good amount of it. So my recommended price for all ballistic ammo is zero caps. That's ballistic ammo though, what about the rest of it? Well, I found some pretty high prices on things like 2mm, railroad spikes, and harpoons. They trended at about three caps, but by looking a little bit harder, you can easily find deals of one cap for this kind of specialty ammo. So in my opinion, you should never charge or pay over one cap for any kind of ammo, excluding plasma cores and others like that. The next most common thing I see in players' vending machines is plans. Now buying plans from other players can be a great way to fill out your crafting knowledge. As someone who doesn't do very many events or capture very many workshops, I've been snatching up plans from vendors on the regular. So now is a good time to bring up the recommended price given to you down by its stats. So this price seems to influence how people set the price on their plans. But I'm here to tell you that it means absolutely nothing. Even the plans with the highest recommended price should never be bought for more than a few hundred caps. Yes, including that T60 jetpack plan that is recommended to be sold for 3,000 caps with a little bit of shopping around, you can find it for cheap. Next, let's talk chems. Chems normally trend at about 15 to 20 caps. This is actually a pretty reasonable price, although if you shop around, you can find all sorts of chems for about five caps, although you might not be able to find them all in one place. Now mods. Mods are one of the things in the game that can be more valuable than you might expect, because some of them are pretty rare. There really isn't a good set price for all mods, but they average at about 150 caps, and depending on the mod, this might be a pretty good price. Now let's go into the big one, weapons and armor. Starting with armor, in my findings, the assassin legendary effect was clearly the most valuable. These armor pieces give you a 75% chance to reduce damage from another player by 8%. This kind of armor can give a real advantage in survival mode, and some players can look at it as an investment. They can buy a bunch of this armor, go into survival mode, and quickly make their money back. Other than that legendary effect, most other armor pieces are priced about the same, normally around 50 to 150 caps depending on how many stars it has. Because remember, you can break down this armor into scrip, which will always be worth something. Weapons, on the other hand, are completely different, and is what most people are looking for when they are visiting your shop. So for vendors, it is where most of the value of your shop will lie. The legendary effects you're looking for are the bloodied effect, which gives you plus 50% limb damage, the instigating effect, which gives you double damage if your target is at full health, and the furious effect, which gives you plus 15 damage on every consecutive hit. And finally, the most coveted weapon effects are the two-shot and the explosive, and bonus value if the weapon weapon is TSE, or two-shot explosive. These weapons I have seen trading around 3,000 caps and are some of the most valuable items in the game. People will pay for these weapons if they have the right effects, and it's up to you to figure out how much you want to pay 
and how much you should charge for your particular weapon. But when it comes to other legendary effects, legendary weapons are basically only worth their script, which is generally around 5 caps per script, so a 1 star weapon with say, the hunter's effect would be worth about 25 caps, and a trash 3 star legendary weapon would be worth about 200. Alright, next let's focus on the strategies for finding the best deals, because there is a small strategy to this. If you're looking for cheap goods, look for player vendors everywhere else other than White Springs and Harper's Ferry. These seem to be the two most populated areas and where most what I will call supermarket shops are set up. These supermarket shops are going to be neatly organized and have really cool camps built around them. But here's the thing, if someone's working so hard on the presentation of their shop, they're going to expect a high return on it. So most of these supermarket shops are going to be well overpriced. So look elsewhere. Look for the shops that are out in the middle of nowhere, and that may only have a few weapons or armor to sell. These vendors will almost always have better prices, because for the most part, it seems like they're just looking to get rid of some things. Alright, that's all I have on buying and pricing. I hope everybody enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe, it really helps out my channel. And if you've made it this far in the video, consider joining my channel's membership. You get a cool little cryptid symbol next to your name when you comment, and it goes a long way in supporting my channel, so thank you. Also consider following me on Twitter, it's the best place for me to keep in contact with you guys. But anyway, this has been Wijin TV. thanks for watching guys.